Hi everybody, my name is Jim. I'm the owner of Sprague Wood Turning. Welcome to my channel. Well, it's the 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. And you know, I have a lot of American subscribers. Uh, actually 40% of my channel is American and 45% of the views I get on my channel come from the States as well. To give back to you guys, I thought I would do an American flag themed project. So this is gonna be the Stars and Stripes clock. Now, of course, we have the largest undefended border in the world. Our economies are interlinked. A lot of cross-border marriages. I mean, this is a no-brainer for me. And, you know, a thank you back to my American subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Anytime I can get a thumbs up on my videos helps with the analytics. And, of course, sharing my video on your social media platform is totally awesome as well. I don't really have anything to show you other than a concept. So let's get over to the bench and I'll show you kind of where I want to start. All right, so this is what we're going to use for the clock the mold. Here's a template that I have um, to round things on my new rounding jig, which I'll show you here in a second. Anyway, it fits in there nicely. Now, the American flag has red seven red stripes and six white stripes. So what I'm gonna do, this is maple. Ideally this would be holly, but I don't have any because holly is a very white wood. Uh, but maple's as close as I've got in order to do this project. So what I'm gonna do is, so seven red stripes. So this is gonna be red resin here, 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 and so on. And of course, six white stripes and that's what the maple is going to represent. So what we need to do right now is take this over to the circle cutting jig. I've already marked the center for this and we'll get this rounded to the proper size of the bucket and then we'll go ahead and glue down our stripes onto the base of this and put it in the bucket. All right, so as you can see, my spacers, I cut those down so that we can mark the placement of the stripes. Um, I should also mention that this is actually 3 16 MDF. That's what I'm mounting this to. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna measure in here, make sure it's even on the end. There, that's the same on both sides. And I'm just going to mark these, and uh, that way we'll be able to set them down, um, run a bead of glue and set them down. There. So yeah, since these are all three-quarter, the spacers are three-quarter, um, so this should work out well. Let's get these glued down. I'll just let that harden up a bit, and then we'll go back to the bandsaw and cut this. Well, what do you think? I don't really care to hold on to those little pieces, but I think it was more important to hold on to them and let them go down inside and maybe the bandsaw kick them out. But I might build a piece that goes in the little throat area to prevent pieces like this from falling down there and maybe kicking out. All right, so all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna touch up the edges here with some sandpaper and uh, we'll get some resin done. Well, if you're enjoying the video so far, uh, since I shot this video, I've actually cut a slot in the back of that so I can pull the whole rig forward. 
put an oversized piece down, push it forward and round it. I'm going to use the deep cast from Designer Epoxy. Going with the deep cast, that will allow any bubbles to escape or any air that's that's in the epoxy when it goes into the pressure pot. Uh, the Pro Series hardens up faster, so uh, if you're going to do a project like this, uh, deep cast is recommended. Of my red pigments, the Pro Red certainly looked to be the closest to the American flag, so that's why I used it. All right, so that's all the pearl red that I actually have. So let's hope this is enough. <laughs> I got so many pigments, I forgot that I've got a whole jar of this. <laughs> so this is another 18 ounces. This should do it. Camera shut off a little for a little bit there. All right, well, that's it. Um, I'll put this in the pressure pot. I'll leave it for 36 hours, and then I'll see you guys later. I didn't show the mixing of this, but this is actually pearl white as well. I figured we would stick with the pearl theme with the uh, clock. This is the deep cast again. Again, there's no rush for these, so if I wanted to speed, if I had to speed the project up, I would have used uh, the Pro Series. Um, that way, you know, overnight, the next day, I can uh, go on with it. But I need to wait for that resin to cure, the red resin to cure anyway, so I'll just use the deep cast. That way, hopefully, we won't get any bubbles in our work. I'm not going to put this in the pressure pot. I don't think there's a need to. All right, so it's been, uh, I don't know, a couple days. Uh, let's see if we can get this out. We lost a little bit of our thickness here, probably about an eighth of an inch. It's no big deal. All right, let's uh, let's get this mounted on the lathe. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I just cut down through that little our little uh, where our center point was. Now I'm actually going to shape a block, a waste block to go on this. It's got this incorporated on it, that way when the waste block gets pushed on it with the hot melt glue, it should line up perfectly. Alright, so I should have known better. Uh, this little nub isn't long enough, so I'm going to return uh, probably a different one now with a longer little nipple on here so that it goes down to here. This is just barely touching. Uh, I didn't account for that. Anyway, I'll be right back. All right, so we should have better luck this time. There, we'll let that cool down and get it on the lathe. Starting here with the 5 8 bowl gouge from David Ellsworth. And you know, I can it's cutting all right, but I can tell that there's some issues with it. So uh that's this is the Viceroy from Hunter Tool Systems. And it does a good job nibbling away all that resin. Just trying to true it up so that I've got so I can see wood on all the end grain. So on the face of the clock, I decided to stay with the 5 8 bowl gouge. I mean starting off here, you're turning more wood than you are resin. Uh, one, of the, one of the problems with carbide tools is that they don't have a real long flat edge on them unless you're using like a square type cutter, which I'm not real a real fan of because they really tend to uh, grab. So in this case, the gouge on its side like it is there after being freshly sharpened will do a good job cutting that resin back 
and you're, you're probably left with a much flatter surface. Cutting in here where the blue is going to be and where our stars are going to set. And that's a freshly sharpened 3 8 inch, or sorry, 3 16 inch um, parting tool from Crown. It's so crucial right here, especially as I get to the outer edge, that there's no, there's no tear out. Now, this is the Easy Woods Rougher. And this is the tool I'm talking about where it's got that long, flat edge. I like it because it'll give me a flat surface in a recess like this, but it can be really grabby. So I always have the handle tilted up. Um, that way it tends to be less grabby and you know, you don't destroy your, your, uh, your project. After uh, looking at it, Again, I figured oh, I got to go deeper with this. So yeah, I'm just again, you can see that handle's tilted up, and just hoping that it's not going to grab. I just wanted to show this before we do the resin. Uh, that's about the center of that piece of wood, and look how far that epoxy has wicked in. It's come in almost, you know, pretty much an, an inch all the way around. So you know, if you've got any splits on the end grain of these. Well, they'll be sealed up really good. It's kind of interesting to see that it has traveled that far into um, into the wood. Pretty cool. I'm going to use the Pro Series this time. I'm right, going to use Rainbow Blue. That should be pretty darn close to the color. If not, I'll put a touch of black pearl in it, and that should really darken it up to where we want it. Now I want this to be really strong in color. I don't want to be able to see um, the red resin in the wood underneath this. So we'll see what this looks like and we'll add some more if we need to. Oh, what do you think? I think it might be all right just the way it is. Yeah, I think that's good. So what we're gonna do, is put this in the pressure pot, I'll level it, and we'll do the pour in the clean room. There, I don't think we're going to be able to see any of the red underneath of that. Hopefully not anyway. Just put a little bit more in. All right, that's it. We'll see you uh, tomorrow morning. So before we put our stars in, it's a little dished here uh, we're on the edges. So I'm just gonna flatten this in here um, and I'm gonna clean up the rest of this. Um, I'll probably sand to, I'm thinking probably 320 is probably good. I plan on putting a clear coat over the top of this after to fill in the stars. Anyway, we'll get there in a, in a minute. But anyway, um, yeah, just when this resin cured, it kind of dished up on the ends uh, so the stars won't sit flat in there. So I got to flatten that. So my wife and I had a debate over this. Uh, she thought that the groove should have been deeper and the stars more recessed in the clock, which there certainly was room for. Um, and then just fill in that channel with clear and then sand out the rest of the clock. Um, I was really looking for a complete resin face on it, so that's kind of why I wasn't real concerned about the depth. Anyway, kind of curious to see um, what your thoughts are on that. Like I said before, I said this out to uh, 500 on the flat face. I also did see a need to sand where I had some tool marks in there on the blue, so it was important to do that. All right, it's time to put our stars on. I'm going to be using the Starbond Medium. 
Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay out like the, the 12, three, six, and nine, and then I'm just gonna fill in between them. Not gonna put very much on here, just a little drop. And I'm just eyeballing it. Anyway, once I get these stuck down, I'll just let them sit for a little bit. Let, this, let the CA glue cure up, and then we will mix up some resin. The other debate that I had with my wife was uh, she thought that the two points of the star should have been touching the inner ring as opposed to all being pointed in one direction. I do want the stars kind of all pointing in one direction. So that's what I'm doing here if you're curious. I figured that the clock would only be looked at one way, so that's why I set them all in the same direction. There, you get the idea. I'll bring you back when I'm done. All right, so what do you think? I think it's pretty cool. Um, so we're gonna pour clear over the top of this. But I want it to be proud of the surface because these stars are slightly above. Maybe next time I'll recess them further and then we'll just pour a clear coat in here. If there is a next time, I don't know. And um, anyway, I'm just going to take these strips from a five gallon bucket and hot melt glue them on here. And then we can get to pouring our resin. All right, so I've taped the heck out of this. So if it leaks, um, well, I don't know, tons of tape. So hopefully it doesn't. So what I'm gonna do is get this in the pressure pot, I'm gonna level it, and then we'll come back and do some resin. Deep cast from Designer Epoxy. All right, let's start with 24 ounces and uh, we'll mix some more if we need it from there. So crucial to keep this clean and any of the little bits of whatever that are in it, try and get it out. Cause you're gonna see it if you don't. So this epoxy has a two hour work time, or open time. So it uh, gives you lots of opportunity to let bubbles escape. Um, once it's pressurized for the resin to be pushed into areas. Actually, that's pretty much the perfect amount. I know you guys can't see it from there, but it is. So what I'm going to do is actually just let this sit for probably about a half hour and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to burn all the bubbles off. You can see there's still some air trapped underneath the stars. So hopefully that will be all gone and then I'll burn that off and then I'll pressurize it. There, that may not even have been necessary, but um, well, I'm not going to take any chances. I will pressurize this very, very slowly. And we'll see you in a couple days. Well, there you go. We are out of the pressure pot. Everything's gone uh, as planned as far as the clarity of the resin. But I screwed up the placement of the stars. I'm not happy with... You know, this one's too close to this one. Uh, same thing on the other side. I don't know how I'd screw that up. Uh, anyway. So what does that mean? That means it's a redo. 
I, uh, I'll just cut all this clear resin off, go down to the channel again, and then we'll do the same thing over. <sighs> This way you get to keep all the skin on your fingers. Well, all right, uh, we've been here before, haven't we? Yeah. All right, so to hopefully, you know, make sure there's no more errors here. That's 2.25 from point to point. So, I don't know, if it's off, then it's off. It's it's an optical illusion. Anyway, that's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the other side, and I'll just bring it back when we're ready to pour some resin. All right, so after probably playing around with this thing for an hour, maybe even longer, I think we've got it. Um, not an easy thing to do. I know it may look, it may look simple, but... You know, just trying to measure everything to get it exact. I tried eyeball it the first time and it bit me. So here we are. Anyway, I'm going to put this on the lathe to put our um, pieces of bucket back on it. That'll be easier than what I did yesterday. And uh, anyway, I think it's good. I hope it's good. Well, this seems familiar. All right, see you in a couple of days, folks. All right, the time has come. Man, I hope there's no issues with this. I am starting to run out of time here to get this done. I think we're good. I hope we're good. Sure looks like it. I don't see anything embedded in it, so that's good. So for something right there. That will probably turn away. Whew. That's a relief. To keep the face really nice and flat, I decided to use a sanding block to do that, and it worked quite well. I can't remember how far I went. Uh, I think I probably went to around 220, and then I switched over to uh, the 3.5 inch double disc to finish it off. Since this is an all resin piece, I decided to use... Um, some uh, wet dry sandpaper. Again, you can get these from sandpaper.ca. And I think it sanded all the way up to 2000 and uh, then buffed. So here's a triple E compound. Uh, I did this prior to polishing with Plast X. Uh, lost that footage though, but there is a polish on it after this. Of course, cleaning with denatured alcohol prior to that. Well, what do you think so far? Pretty darn neat, I think. Uh, overall, I'm pretty pleased with the clarity of the resin as well. So, uh, we need to drill a hole. 
Now if I drill from the back side, on, like, on my drill press, I'm worried about chipping out a bunch on the face. So what I'm going to do is use this little skew chisel. And I'm just going to start, I'll find out where exactly where center is, start a little hole. Then I'll use a 5 16 drill bit and drill all the way through by hand till we hit the waste block in the back. Now, ideally, this would be inboard and I could use the tailstock, but you know, things you deal with when you're left handed. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing. So, there, hopefully, that'll keep the drill bit from wandering. Let's get the drill. Of course, the main concern here is keeping the drill level as you uh, as you drill into this. Last thing you want is a hole that's going on an angle, because that's not going to be good. Just using a grinder here to grind down the rest of the waste block and the glue. And then you'll see me switch to the random orbital just to flatten it off and have a nice flat surface. All right, so it's time to um, put our clock mechanism in. Now, this one, I think this is three quarters of an inch. Uh, anyway, it's not long enough to go through to the, um, not even close to being long enough. The, um, and I'll show you. So, I mean, it's got to come in. It's got to come in three quarters of an inch, be sunk into the clock in order for it to, uh, so we can put the nut on it and the hands and all that good stuff. So, all I'm going to do, these lines that are on here, they're just reference lines from the wood where it goes across. And from there, I'm just going to eyeball this out so that it looks good. This is not, you know, this is not crucial at all. I don't want this to be tight in here either. So, you know, I'll give it, you know, about maybe an eighth of an inch either side of it. All right, so there's our square that we want to cut out. And what I'm going to use is my DeWalt router. It's got a 3 8 inch plunge bit in it. It's the plunge router. And uh, my only concern is, number one, I've never used a router on resin. So I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure it's probably very similar to wood. But, you know, I'm worried about scratching up the face on this. This is kind of one of my big problems I've got. And while this is heavy, I'm worried about it moving around. So I don't know, I, I just don't really see any way to fix it. Any way that I try to fix it is going to be in the way for the router. So, uh, I guess I'll just take little bites and we've got to go three quarters of an inch. I actually went an inch deep on this to uh, get that clock mechanism to work properly. This router has a removable plate. I'm going to remove it because I can't see anything. This is all filling up with, with chips like you can see. And I can't see anything. So, I'll be back in a second. This router does have a depth stop on it, so I'm just going to push this down and lock it. And then uh, I've got it already set at three quarters of an inch. So uh, that's a great router. And of course, another way that this could have been done is with a uh, really large Forstner bit in your, um, your drill press. That's probably would have been the other way to do it, but I didn't have a Forstner bit that was large enough to do the job. So that's why I use the router. All right, so for normal clocks, you would put this through, well, actually, here's the piece that you would use to hang the clock from 
little metal piece that goes over here. And then there's this little rubber gasket that goes on top of it. And then you'd shove it through the, the clock. There's a washer and the nut on the outside. I'm not going to use this. This is way too heavy to rely on this and to rely on the strength of this. So I'm just going to put a couple of uh, eyelets in the back and put some wire in the back to hang it. Um, so anyway, we don't need this and we don't need these two pieces. Now this mechanism that I got, I got from Amazon. Uh, just be careful when you're ordering these because uh, the, the minute hand, the hour hand, and the second hand come in different lengths. So, you have to be careful about the length of the brass piece that comes through here, and you have to be careful about the hands as well. All right, let's uh, finish this video up. Well, that's it for the video. Let's uh, have a last little look at our stars and stripes clock. It's kind of a, a gray day here today, so I've got to use some lights. It uh, ended up being 10 and a half by an inch and a half. You can actually see the stars through the clear. Kind of neat. I did put a wire on the back to hang it. And uh, I'm also going to put on a 5 8 block down here uh, because when it's hung on the wall, it's going to be doing this number. That way it stays straight. This is really heavy. I don't know how heavy it is, but it's uh, it's got to be over 10 pounds for sure. A um, couple of little spots. The 10 o'clock star has a couple of bits in it. One up in the corner here and I think one down below here. Uh, you you can't even see them from from distance. You never you got to really get up to it and look at it before you're like, oh, there it is. So um, you know, ironically, the first pour was flawless, but somebody didn't use a measuring device to lay out the stars. Anyway, <laughs> don't do that, and I certainly won't do it again. I am going to sell this piece. Uh, it's going to go for five hundred dollars Canadian. I think that's probably around $420 American if you're interested. I'll see if there's any interest. I, make, I might make some more. Uh, it certainly won't be till the fall. I've just got, I, I can't do it till the fall now for sure. But anyway, let me know in the comments down below what you think about our Stars and Stripes clock. I think it's really cool and certainly probably the most complex uh, resin pour project that I've done so far. Um, don't forget about our sponsors in the description down below to sandpaper.ca Designer Epoxy, again, who knocked it out of the park here. Um, Hunter Tool Systems and, of course, Starbond Adhesives. All your discount codes are in the description down below, so make sure you check them out. And don't forget to leave a comment because that's where we're going to pick uh, the next winner for 25000 So actually, probably when this view, when this airs, uh, there will probably, will probably be over 25000 But, of course, I have to film this before and get it uploaded and so on and so on. So... Um, It'll probably be, we'll do a draw next video. So make sure you come on back for that. Happy birthday, America. Happy 4th of July. Don't drink too much. <laughs> anyway, till the next one, take care, stay safe. Don't forget that bell. Don't forget that thumbs up. And of course, sharing my videos on your social media platforms is totally awesome as well. See you next week.